Вот сейчас у меня в голову пришел анекдот, который недавно рассказывал своим коллегам. Мне один приятель из Германии его рассказал недавно. Семья. Папа спрашивает у... Э, сын спрашивает у папы. Папа, почему так холодно? А он говорит, потому что Россия напала на Украину. Ребенок спрашивает, а мы здесь при чем? А мы ввели санкции против русских. Зачем? Чтобы им было плохо. А мы что, русские? This is my first video update coming to you from Aya Napa Cyprus on this Friday. Friday morning. Time flies. So let's uh, let's talk about some news. And uh, this video, I am going to focus on Putin's Q&A, his speech at the Valdai Forum and uh, the Discussion Club, to be more precise, the Valdai International Discussion Club. And uh, this was quite, quite a speech, quite a Q&A. I think the whole thing lasted something like four and a half, five hours. Uh, the Q&A alone was something like for four hours plus and around the three hour mark the three the three hour 30 minute mark the uh, moderator was like uh we've been we've been here for for over three hours maybe we should wrap this up and uh take a final question and putin was like you know i call the shots here let's let's keep on going and he took like five or six more questions and they went on for like another 45 minutes anyway putin said a lot he said a lot in his speech he said a whole lot during the Q&A, and I'm going to, uh, to read out quite a bit of, uh, of his statements and his thoughts. And uh, real quick, if you want to know why so many collective West world leaders hate the, uh, the Russian president, well, jealousy. Jealousy. It's a very powerful thing. I, uh, I doubt that there is uh, a leader in the collective West that can sit down for four hours without a script, without a, te without a teleprompter, take questions, sometimes difficult questions, and answer them and, uh, and just keep on going, you know? And he looks relaxed, he's relaxed, he knows his stuff, he's uh, well prepared. And uh, I, I think there's a lot of collective West leaders that just look at what he does and they say, you know, I don't like that guy. <laughs> I don't like that guy because he's, uh, he outworks all of us and he knows his stuff. He knows what he's talking about. And so a lot of the reasons why uh, Bidenopolis and Vander Crazy and Trudeau and Schultz, why they hate uh, Putin so much and by extension Russia is because He's confident and competent, and uh, he can talk to, to the people because that's what he's doing to the entire world. He can talk to the entire world, to the Russian people and to the entire world and to the media for four or five hours, and he doesn't need a teleprompter or a script or anything. Have you ever heard Obama speak without a teleprompter? Train wreck. Biden? I doubt Biden could, uh, could speak for more than 30 minutes. Without a teleprompter or a script, I doubt Biden could speak for more than, more than two minutes. I mean, he was giving an inter interview with Jake Tapper at CNN, and he, he had, uh, he had his, uh, his cheat sheet right there, and he dropped it, and Tapper picked it up. So he couldn't even give an interview with uh, a very friendly CNN without having his cheat sheet handy. Vander Crazy Schultz, Trudeau, forget about it. Macron, no chance. So that's one of the reasons, a big reason why they despise Putin so much. Because he's just, uh, he's better than them, isn't he? And, and the final thought before I read what uh, some of the things that he said, does, uh, during these four or five hours, did this look like a Russian president that was uh, losing this conflict? Whether it's the economic war or the war on the ground in Ukraine or or the geopolitical war? Was this someone who looked nervous, who was panicky? First of all, if he was losing, and if Russia was at the, uh, 
at the edge of collapse, would he be sitting down and speaking for, for five hours, and taking questions from reporters from all around the world, from Venezuela and from India and from China and from Kazakhstan and from Belarus? He was fielding questions from everybody. Does that look like uh, a leader that is uh, about to fall apart, that is about to go? No. So uh, whatever happens day by day in, in, in this conflict, the big picture is that Putin seems very, very confident and very relaxed. And uh, he, gave, he gave his best. I mean, he was really on point during this Valdai forum. So let's begin talking about what he said. Enough of me rambling on here in, uh, in Ayanaba. First of all, let's talk about the title of this forum. The title is, uh, is quite interesting. The 19th meeting of the Valdai International Discussion Club. The title and the theme of this forum was, is... The post-hegemonic world, justice and security for all. <laughs> justice for all. Isn't that Superman's uh, slogan or something? Or the Justice League or the Avengers? Isn't it, is it like their slogan, justice for all or something like that? <laughs> but wow, what a, what a title. I, the title is kind of like a troll, isn't it? They're trolling the collective West, right? The post-hegemonic world. Justice and security for all. Quite a title. So now let's, uh, let's talk about some of the, uh, the statements and, and the Q&A. And I'm just going to be reading you some of Putin's quotes. And um, yeah, let me know in the comments down below what you think. So let's begin with, and this is, this is in no particular order. The so-called West. Make, they make the rules, then they change the rules. So Putin said the so-called West, which is, which is, of course, a theoretical construct, since it is not united and clearly is a highly complex conglomerate. But I will still say that the West has taken a number of steps in recent years, and especially in recent months, that are designed to escalate the system-wide crisis. Putin said, as a matter of fact, they always seek to aggravate matters, which is nothing new. And this includes the uh, stoking of war in Ukraine, the provocations around Taiwan, the destabilization of the global food and energy markets. Putin said the West insists its culture and worldview should be universal while not saying it outright. They believe as if these values must be unconditionally accepted by everyone else. Yet when some other countries, notably China, began benefiting from globalization, the West immediately changed or completely canceled many of the rules it long insisted were set in stone and sacred. Putin said that uh, with free trade and economic openness, fair competition and even property rights suddenly forgotten at once completely. As soon as something becomes profitable for themselves, they change the rules immediately on the go in the course of the game. Putin, of course, referring to property rights and the seizure of, uh, of Russian assets, obviously. He talked about the multipolar world, and he said, in a truly democratic multipolar world, any society, culture, and civilization should have the right to choose its own path and socio-political system. If the US and Europe have that right, so should everyone else. Russia also has it, and no one will ever be able to dictate to our people what kind of society we should build and on what principles. Putin said the biggest threat to the political, economic, and ideological monopoly of the West is that alternative so social models may arise in the world and would be more efficient and more attractive. Above all, we believe that the new world order should be based on law and justice be free, authentic, and fair on cancel culture. This is what he said on cancel culture. Now, during his, uh, his Q&A in his speech, he said some controversial stuff. He said some st serious things. He also said some, uh, some funny stuff as well. He has a little bit of a, uh, of a comic 
uh, streak to him. Putin likes to joke around every now and then. Anyway, on cancel culture, he said, uh, the West believing themselves infallible, the rulers of the West desire to destroy or cancel those they dislike. When NAZIs burn books, the Western guardians of liberalism and progress now ban Dostoevsky and Tchaikovsky. Liberal democracy has transformed into something unrecognizable, declaring any alternative viewpoint as propaganda or a threat. The so-called cancel culture destroys anything that is alive and creative, preventing any freedom of thought in culture, economics, or politics alike. History, of course, will put everything in its place. The self-conceit of those who seek to cancel them is off the charts, but no one will even remember their names in a few years, while Dostoevsky and Tchaikovsky and Pushkin will endure. Yeah, he's right about that. No one's going to remember all these uh, cancer culture uh, crazies, but uh, we're always going to remember Dostoevsky and Pushkin, Tchaikovsky. They can't cancel them, no matter how many uh, quote-unquote books they burn. They can't cancel these great... Uh, heroes of uh, literature and poetry and music. On uh, Turkey and Erdogan, Putin was given the question by the moderator. Two years ago at our conversations, you spoke very highly of President Erdogan, that he does not wag his tail and is a real man. A lot of things have also happened in these two years. Has your score remained the same? Putin answered, yes, he is a strong, strong leader who is guided primarily and perhaps exclusively by the interests of Turkey, the Turkish people and the interests of the Turkish economy. To a large extent, this, is, this explains his position on energy issues, on the construction of, say, the Turkish stream. We have now proposed to create a gas hub in Turkey for consumers in Europe. The Turkish side agreed, also, of course, primarily based on its own interests. There are a lot of interests in the tourism sector, a lot of interests in the construction sector and in agriculture. We have a lot of over overlapping vectors of mutual interests. President Erdogan never allows himself to sit on, on his neck and be guided by the interests of third countries. But of course he protects and in dialogue with us, first of all, his interests. In this sense, Turkey in general and President Erdogan in particular are not easy partners. Many decisions are born in long and difficult disputes and negotiations. But there is a desire on both sides to reach these agreements. And we, as a rule, reach these agreements. In this sense, Erdogan is, of course, a consistent and reliable partner. Perhaps this is probably the most important characteristic. He is a reliable partner. Once again, Putin taking a jab at the unfriendly countries that are not reliable partners. Putin on gender theory. This one was an interesting one. He said, respecting the peculiarities of people and civilizations is in everyone's interest. Actually, it is in the interest of the West too. As it loses superiority, it is quickly becoming a minority culture-wise. That said, Western culture should be respected just like any other. If Western elites believe that they can incorporate into the minds of their people, their societies, things that I personally find somewhat weird and which are apparently in fashion, like dozens of genders and gay pride parades, so be it. Let them do whatever they want. But the West has no right to impose their cultural preferences on other nations and societies. Russia does not lecture others on how they should live and does not want to be lectured. Putin also said that he has chosen, that Russia has chosen a path towards traditional values. And he actually defined traditional values in a way. He explained that traditional values, their difference, the difference of traditional values from so-called neoliberal values is that in every case they are unique because they stem from the traditions of a particular society, its culture and historic experience. He also said that you should not force values on other countries. Here's what Putin said with regards to uh, China and the Ukraine offensive. 
So when Putin was asked about whether he notified the Chinese President Xi Jinping about the SMO, the Special Military Operation, on February 24th, Putin re Putin's response was a flat-out no. Very simple, very simple response, no. But he also said that uh, the Chinese leader did not take offense to, uh, to the fact that Putin did not notify him about the SMO. He described Xi as a world-caliber statesman, and he said that, uh, that Russia makes sovereign decisions. Both Russia and the People's Republic of China make sovereign decisions. He said the Chinese leadership stands for pragmatic, balanced solutions to the crisis in Ukraine by peaceful means, and we respect this position. This is what Putin said with regard to the West and whether he considers the West to be an enemy of Russia. He said, in the current conditions of a tough conflict, I will say some things directly. Russia being an independent, original civilization has never considered and does not consider itself an enemy of the West. Hatred for American, British, French, or German people are the same form of racism as Russophobia and anti-Semitism. Putin described the West as two entities, on the one hand, the traditional, primarily Christian West is close to us in some ways. He noted that we have many, that we have in many respects, common and ancient roots. But there is another West, an aggressive cosmopolitan neo-colonial West acting as an instrument of neoliberal ideas. It is precisely with the dictate, with the dictates of this West that Russia, of course, will never put up with. Even so, Putin said, Russia is not throwing a gauntlet to the elites of that West, but simply defends its right to exist and develop freely. At the same time, we ourselves are not seeking to become some kind of new hegemon. Those were very, very interesting comments with how Putin sees what's happening with the West. I really like how he says there's two, there's two Wests right now, a traditional West and a neoliberal West. On point, absolutely on point. Now here's a funny comment he made about Pelosi and her trip to Taiwan. He said that Taiwan is part of the People's Republic of China and all visits, and all visits to Taiwan by top foreign officials are perceived as a provocation. Why was it necessary to drag the granny to Taiwan to provoke China into some kind of retaliatory action at a time when they, the U.S., cannot sort out relations with Russia due to what's happening in Ukraine? It's just total nonsense. There's nothing to it. No deeper idea. Just total nonsense, arrogance, arrogance and a sense of impunity. Absolutely correct. What was the point of that whole Pelosi trip? Just to piss off Taiwan. That was it. Why is she? Why is she traveling around to places like Taiwan just to uh, just to take a jab at the Chinese? No point to it whatsoever. Completely right. How about what Putin said with regards to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine as being some sort of civil war? Putin said, "This is one people speaking one language. It is a historical fact that cannot be questioned. Russian statehood emerged." in the territories of present-day Ukraine in the, ninth, in the ninth century, and that language differences only emerged in the 14th and 15th century due to Polish meddling, asked by the moderator if the current fighting in Ukraine amounts to a civil war, Putin responded, sort of, yes. We found ourselves in separate states for a series of reasons, Putin explained, saying that the Soviet Union's creators decided to appease the nationalist tendencies of the Bolsheviks native to Ukraine and gifted them Russian ancestral lands without asking the people who lived there. Interesting comments there. Very controversial comments, but rooted in history, in fact. What about what Putin said with regards to the decade ahead and, uh, and the unpredictable dangerous decade ahead. Putin said that we are standing on a historic frontier. Ahead is probably the most dangerous, unpredictable, and at the same time important decade since the end of World War II. 
I have always believed in the power of common sense, and I still do, so I am convinced that sooner or later, the new centers of the multipolar world and the West will have to embark on an equal dialogue about our shared future, and the sooner that happens, the better. The historical period of the West's undivided dominance over world affairs is coming to an end. And Putin cited a 1978 quote by the Russian writer Solzhenitsyn, and he said that the West has a blindness of superiority. That is a quote. Almost half a century later, the blindness Solzhenitsyn spoke of openly racist and neocolonial, and neocolonial in nature has become simply ugly, especially after the emergence of the so-called unipolar world. No one can sit out the coming storm, Putin said, which has acquired a global character. Humanity has two choices, either to continue to accumulate a burden of problems that will inevitably crush us all, or to try together to find solutions, albeit imperfect, but working, capable of making our world safer and more stable. And when Putin was asked about all the nuclear talk and a nuclear apocalypse, this is where he let his, uh, his lighter side, his comedic side out, because the moderator, by the way, the moderator's name was Fyodor Lukyanov, he told Putin that we grew a bit worried remembering your comments made here four years ago when you said that we would all go to heaven if there was some sort of nuclear conflict. Lukyanov asked, we're not in a hurry to get there, are we? And Putin, he kind of like looked up in a very, he was like very thoughtful, kind of looked up, kind of smiling a little bit. And uh, then he started to, uh, to respond, but uh, everyone was kind of, everyone paused and was kind of like, what's he going to say? What's Putin going to say? And then he said, uh, now that you are lost in thought, it's getting alarming. That's what the moderator said. He said, now that you are lost in thought, it is getting alarming. And Putin said, uh, laughing, he said, I intentionally got lost in thought to alarm you. And he added that the effect has been achieved. So that is what, uh, what Putin said with regards to all the apocalypse talk. And that's going to be my clown world, by the way, is all this nuclear stuff. But uh, Putin let out a little bit of, uh, of his lighter side. And he also, you know, he, um, he diffused a very tense topic, a very scary and terrifying topic. He kind of diffused it. And it's, uh, I have to say, it's kind of it's comforting to see a world leader who has uh, all of these nuclear weapons under his control. It's, it's comforting to see that, you know, he's kind of saying, look, don't worry. People do not worry about things. Everything's under control. Take a breath and, and relax. That was kind of his, his message. And finally, on de-dollarization, this is what Putin said in using the dollar as a weapon. He said that the, that the transition to settlements in national currencies will actively gain momentum. It is inevitable. Such transactions, of course, will gradually become dominant. That's the logic of sovereign economic and financial policy of a multipolar world. Let's just take a pause and see the boat coming in. Putin said that using, using the dollar as a weapon, the United States and the West as a whole discredited the institution of international financial reserves, first devaluing them due to inflation in the dollar and the eurozone, and later completely pocketing our foreign exchange reserves. The seizure of the Russian assets has made all nations think about whether to keep reserves in dollars. I said the same thing a couple of days ago with regards to uh, the, the EU looking to seize the, uh, the billions of, uh, of frozen assets that they have, the Russian frozen assets. And uh, absolutely, there's going to be so many nations and uh, sovereign nations and world leaders and extremely wealthy oligarchs and kings and princes who have their money in the collective West that are just going to be like, today it's Russia, tomorrow it's me, so I better start moving my assets out of the, collect out of the collective West and put them somewhere else. So that is, uh, those are the highlights. There's a lot more. I'll put a link actually to Putin's speech, the actual written speech on, uh, 
from the Kremlin's website. I will put that in the description box down below. And I'll look for a link to, uh, to his four-hour Q&A session. I'll look for that on Rumble or Odyssey. Or if you guys have that link, drop it down in the comments down below as well. If you have four hours to spare and you want to listen to, uh, to what Putin said, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. He said some very interesting things. Now let's do a clown world and we'll wrap this video up. And actually, before I do the clown world, very, very quickly, just so, um, just so you see how the collective West, the media, frames this four hour, four or five hour marathon Q&A. Here's what they said. The New York Times said the Russian president was trying to win over a conservative audience abroad and intended to capitalize on political divisions in the West. Many of the topics of the speech have gained particular resonance given the upcoming elections in the United States and disagreements in Europe over aid to Ukraine. Conservative audience. He's talking about neo-colonialism and, uh, and lifting people out of poverty and, and the fair world order and a multipolar world. And, and according to the New York Times, this is geared towards a conservative audience. Okay, maybe. Financial Times said Putin repeated his reproaches against the West, accusing it of striving to dominate, but called for mutual respect to that rather than making new threats. Okay, that's from the Financial Times and the... Jeff Bezos owned Washington Post said Putin denounced the liberal elites of the West in a speech that was addressed mainly to conservatives outside of Russia. Now, I think Putin was speaking to the Russian people first and foremost, but I think he was speaking to, to his audience, to the media, to the world. But when Putin speaks, he always has the Russian people in mind. That's, those are my thoughts. That's how I see, see, see Putin when, when he speaks. He always has the Russian people first and foremost, and then he's He's addressing a, a global audience, but he's he's very prepared, and uh, and he knows what he's saying. You know, he's not just saying stuff. You know, he's not rambling on like I do or like Bidenopolis does. You know, he doesn't ramble on. He's he, he's on point. He chooses his words carefully. Anyway, clown world, Biden. This is what Biden said as Putin was talking for for five hours. Biden was. Uh, given an interview for five minutes. And uh, he voiced skepticism over Russia's assurances against the use of nuclear weapons. So just three hours after uh, Putin argued that his country has no logical reason to take such a drastic step using nuclear weapons and accused the West of shaping public opinion to blame Russia for a possible nuclear incident in Ukraine, Biden answered, when he was asked about this with a question of his own, saying, if he has no intention, why does he keep talking about it? Come on, man. <laughs> That's what Biden said. Why does he talk about the ability to use a tactical nuclear weapon? He's been very dangerous in how he approaches this. He can end this all. Get out of Ukraine. Well, you could get out of Ukraine. Bidenopolis and NATO. I think you have less of a reason to be in Ukraine than, uh, than Russia does. But uh, anyway, f find, find me a time, find me a speech in the last six months where Putin has said that Russia is going to use nuclear weapons or tactical nukes or anything like that. Find me a speech where he says that. Can't find it. It doesn't exist. Now, Biden and the collective West, well... They've been going on and on about tactical nukes and using tactical nukes and how if Russia uses tactical nukes, they're going to use tactical nukes. And uh, if Russia uses uh, uh, nuclear weapons, well, they're going to destroy all of Russia. And they've been going on and on. The consequences will be grave and they'll be severe and all of this stuff. They've been saying this every single day. Every single leader in the collective West has been talking about tactical nukes. And Alensky, well, Alensky, he's, he's got tactical nukes. They're like renting a room in his head, right? And I'm not even going to get to the, the dirty bomb allegations, but uh, alensky has been talking about preemptive strikes against Russia and, and obtaining tactical nukes before the uh, SMO, after the SMO, during the SMO, when Alensky speaks to, uh, to parliaments and world leaders and universities and think tanks, all he talks about are uh, tactical nukes. So um, projection lies coming right out of uh, bidenopolis anyway that is the clown world 
that's the video. I hope I didn't tire everybody with, uh, with reading everything that uh, Putin said. But, you know, I think it's important to, uh, to listen to Putin. He is one of the, uh, the most important world leaders, if not the most important world leader at the moment. And um, it's important to listen to what he has to say. Absolutely. And the collective West, the media and the collective West will never uh, read to you what uh what he's saying right they'll uh, they'll manipulate it so i wanted to read it to you as he said it and you can decide how you view the statements from putin is this are these the words of a dictator of uh of an authoritarian or are these the words of somewhat something else something something different than what we've been uh propagandized to believe anyway that is the video guys coming to you from Beautiful, uh, yeah, Napa. That boat right there is the Yellow Submarine, <laughs> and it plays the Beatles song, "The Yellow Submarine," as it as it goes around the uh, the port. And there, and there's the uh, what's this one? The the pirate ship, Pirates of the Caribbean ship. I think that's like a booze cruise. I think you get on that boat and. You, uh, you drink and, and party it up and who knows, maybe maybe you can find someone special here in Ayia Napa. Anyway, that's the video, everybody. The Durant.locals.com. Look for us on Rockfin. Check out Alexandra's channel. Check out the Durant's channel and uh, look for us on Telegram and um, Odyssey and BitChute and Rumble and everywhere else. This cat is sound asleep. He found a nice place in the shade. I'm signing out. Take care.